is Ramona. Am I on sideways? You are sideways. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. Like, hey, Ramona. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> I love it. Get your life together. Uh, okay. <laughs> there okay. you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's good to see you again. Good to see you. Man, with a two-year-old, you don't know anything, how anything's rigged around here. <laughs> <laughs> what room are you in today? Uh, this is the sitting room off of the bedroom. Come on, sitting room. Come <laughs> on, sitting room. Yeah, if I go to, um, if I go to any other place, it's a wrap. Zoe will take over. <laughs> right. Take over. That's it. That is it. How, how have you been? Well, how have you been since I've last seen you? It's been been a little while, but we were in person last time. So how is it? And there was no pandemic. I mean, was it getting a little strange though? Was there activity with the COVID? I, I, I can't, it was like it was right around Valentine. I, don't, I mean, yeah, not, so, not, yeah, it was Valentine's. So a little bit. Just a, not in our country though. You know, in America, our president was like, nothing was happening. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the Matrix. <laughs> it was the whole thing. <laughs> That's yeah. a great way to put it, actually. That's yeah. a great way to put it. Oh, yeah. I'm just glad to have you on this show. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to us today. Oh, that's just, it's, this is fun. <laughs> I get I guess, the house. How, how often do you get to be on the other side of being interviewed? Sometimes. Sometimes it's, it's kind of cool. Sometimes, I mean, when I do, it, it's right. I can't think of uh, the last time actually. Well, maybe, maybe you know. With, well, your schedule is normally so busy. Interviewing other busy. people. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and we we like, I and I I think I did an interview on my way to do something for BT. So I think that was the last time. Like it was. Yeah. <laughs> well. Sit back and relax. We're going to have a good time. We're just talking today. Uh, welcome to the heart. And, you know, I really did this show for the particular reason of having real conversations that help anybody who watches. So I want to make sure that we just get everything out that is helpful to anyone else. Oh, Sound good? Yes. It sounds good. Oh, yeah. Pastor E. Dewey Smith, House of Hope. We did a uh, Marriage Matters. So it was my husband and I, and that was a few weeks ago. There it is. There you go. <laughs> he's a good man too. He's a he's a good dude. He's a yeah, really good dude. Very yeah, good. he really is. The um, they're amazing. They were yeah, absolutely. Like really, really good people. I, I, I was in the coaching church for a long time back in Virginia, and the family that I was working with they they knew him very well. So always spoke highly. Yeah. Well, for you, let's jump right in because. You know, I, I've been so fascinated by the woman that you are. I, it's really hard, I would say, for a lot of black women to be a black woman today. There's so many expectations. You have to be strong, you have to be bold, you have to be outspoken, uh, yet you have to be able to do all the marital things of cooking and cleaning, and, you know, raising kids. Like, you gotta have this masterful balance. Uh, how, how have you handled not only wifehood, but now motherhood, like how, how has that process been for you? Um, one diaper at a time. Well, she's <laughs> training, so uh, now, but I, I feel like um, you just have to take it one task at a time. And I have never been a person who thought we couldn't have it all as well. Uh, so, I felt like if I'm going to think this way, then there's got to be a way to execute it without losing my mind. Because mm. I think that some people do that. And sometimes you have meltdowns and you have those moments where it's like, oh, my goodness, I need a moment. Like, I cannot do it all. And so we have those moments. But, you know, thank God that there are less of those than the moments that just take my breath away on how awesome God is. You know, I know that's right. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like. You know, like every single day, no matter where we are, I wake up like, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. I'm here. We're here. It's another day. We're going to do something. Yes. 
every day, every task has become that, you know, and, and then after five tasks that day or 10 tasks that day, it's another day. And next thing you know, a year has gone by and you're like, oh, I did a year? And then two years? <laughs> yeah, because you, you've been on the radio for, uh, I mean, over, over a decade. Yeah. And, since and school. A lot since of school. And like, I so, am so two years ago, that was fine. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How how was that? Because you actually uh, did study English as well. Uh, where where did you go to school, and what was it like? Who were you in school? What type of student were you? I was a little geeky. It's all good. Geeks unite! Come on, let's go. Let's take over Come the world. On. I was Not mad at it. Anybody who's watching, I you know, I my best friend, his name is Marcus, and my husband and I were at Marcus's. Um, in DC and his brother, the story he told about us is that we were the geekiest people on the planet. I was like, was I that nerdy? And I wear that badge with pride out when I talk at schools or when I used to talk in schools when they were open. Um, I, used to, right. I used to say, look, you know, don't be afraid. You know, geeks are gonna run the world. So, you know, get your geek on. And I, I was just telling uh, my, my mom that as a child, it, it I loved it because People used to say, especially when I got my glasses, instead of being intimidated with they call me four eyes, they would say, you look so smart. And so I wanted to embody that. And that's why I always say, like, when we speak to kids and we speak, we have to speak life and uh, mm -hmm. prosperity. So, you know, like, wow, you you really did that well. And so they're like, I did. But I was one of those kids. Like, someone, someone was always there to give me some positive feedback, um, mm -hmm. even if there was negative feedback from the environment. So... I was, um, as a result, you know, I loved school. <laughs> I loved it. So um, I, got, I, I received a four-year scholarship to my college, um, Springfield College. It's where basketball was invented. And I loved basketball, um, football. I was, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, and that's like, in the, that's the lifeline. We're like a, I don't know, a cult type of city. Um, right, so sports all day. <laughs> Yes, and I loved English, um, and I loved English literature, so it was quite natural when I received that scholarship. I really wanted to go to Spelman, but, you know, the money. I followed the money. So when I took that scholarship to that amazing uh, college, I said, well, how can I make this work, you know? Um, and so I said, well, they have a basketball was invented there so espn is currently there in in that uh, department so i said well how can i make this work i love sports i could i could be a commentator i was the only black in the school in that uh discipline and i was the only wow. female in the in the major but then when i got hired um you know i came here i moved here and i guess i've been here ever since so Wow, that is awesome. Like, when you moved down, you were out of school. What was the process of moving down? Did you have friends, family, support system? My aunt was living here already. Everybody was moving to Atlanta, you know, um, almost around the Olympics. And it was time. It was like, you know, oh, and the other thing is that I was, um, you know, I'm, I'm a vocalist. And so in between classes on weekends and I was coming to Atlanta to Dark Studios. I was always flying back and forth to record with different producers. Mm. And, um, so I was working on the album. So it wasn't, I always wanted to come to Atlanta, but then there was also, okay, I'm a singer and you need to be in Atlanta if you're an R&B singer. So right. when I happened to take, um, I got hired for the station that brought me down here for weekends. And at the same time, I had gotten a record deal with Island Records through a producer named Harvey Alston, who at the time was managing some pretty big folks. Um, and they were putting out a lot of records with different folks from LaFace or whatever. So, um, you know, I had all of that going on when mm -hmm. I was hired for the radio and then also got that record deal. So there was a lot going on when I moved here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, so I packed everything in the boxes. I was like, I'll finish the classes. I'll finish at Spelman. I know that's right. Because I was in school on a, on a scholarship, you know? <laughs> so they were like, wait, where's our scholarship recipient going? Because you know, it was right. one a year. So 
Um, but you know, they have since forget, forgiven me and they, they're proud of everything that I've done. That's awesome. <laughs> What, what would you say to somebody right now who's in that place who has the dream and wants to do it with their whole heart and yet feels those obligations or those ties to other things in their lives, whether it be church, family, friends, whatever, uh, what would you say to them? What would you encourage them if they came to you? I would tell them to go for it, you know, because, you know, first of all, I didn't know it at the time. But that took the utmost faith to jump on a Greyhound bus with a box mm. of, of clothes from my dorm and jump into two uncertain businesses, right? So, like, first of all, <laughs> radio, there's like four slots. Singing, there's like, you know, certain amount of artists signed every, every year and then only a few make it to, you know, whatever. So, you know, I had this pulling. There was this mm. pragmatic, practical, you mm. need to, you're an incredible writer. You need to do something with that. Maybe go into law school because mm -hmm. um, I was always in community service. I, I was with the Urban League since I was a kid. So yes. in fact, they gave me my recommendation for college. I, I We were volunteering since I was a, a baby, you know, basically in and out of homes and with senior citizens and stuff. So I had this other side of me over here and then i had this other side that was like girl you want to sing go <laughs> sing or you want to entertain you want to be on the radio like go so there it was really it was really a leap of faith to pack mm -hmm. my stuff up and i remember the box was huge <laughs> it was <laughs> and you know i don't regret it at all um that's probably why people can't figure out like, wait, you have not been on the air this long. Like you're not old enough to have been. And I'm like, oh, I was a, a teenager when I was on the air. <laughs> so that's, you know, that explains it sometimes. That does. Like, they're like, nah, you know, like it's me, it's really me. But I was <laughs> so young, you know, but I would just say jump and go as hard as you can. Go as hard as you can. Now I had a friend who, who um, was playing for a major, 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 major school. Um, he was playing basketball and he told me, Ramona, I'm gonna put my name in the draft. And I was like, really? You don't wanna wait a year? And I, I thought about it and I was like, well, if he gets injured, he may not, next year, it ain't gonna be no next year. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. English major, so ain't gonna be no next year. So, At all. so for that purpose, and then I, I saw where he and his wife had just posted that um, he just, received his PhD. So I was like, you go. So he did it. And he also did and followed his dream of playing in the NBA. So I just say jump and, mm. but you have to plan it out a little bit too. <laughs> I had somewhere to go. You know, I had my aunt had just moved here. Right. My great grandmother was here with her. So, you know, it was calculated. I, mm. I, I still, I'm still a planner in that regard. But you know, I really believe in that, that what you're saying in, in simpler terms is really what the Bible says about faith without works being dead, uh, that you got to activate that faith with some work and that your work validates the faith and your faith validates the work. And the two create synergy that then formulates the, the projection of your yes. Of your path. Yes. Yeah. When so. I tell you, I did not. I felt like I was homeless for a while too, because my aunt was like, "So you you need three months," and I was like, "Yeah, I just need three months." <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, thank you, thank you. Um, and so I said, "Yeah, just give me three months." In in a, in a month and a half, she's awesome too. My aunt Gwen is amazing. Mm -hmm. She actually consults people on small businesses, and at one point, uh, she was a grant and proposal writer, and she had the Genesis Foundation. So. She is awesome. She's not an enabler in any way. She will get you on your merry way. And um, I remember looking for an apartment and the day she said it, it was a month and a half in, I was living at her house off Panola Road, mm. um, Evans Mill. <laughs> I had to take the bus. I had to take two buses and a train. No, wow. Two trains. Two trains and two buses to get to College Park to that radio station, okay? And um, she said to me one day, yeah, so it's a month and a half. How's your apartment search looking? And I was so proud. I was like, look, 
I found four. And this, I moved out within maybe two weeks. Wow. And and she's so proud, like even now, like, you know, uh, but she was another person that even though I jumped, she still wanted me to, you know, make it make sense. Mm. People like her have made this, you know, even now she'll check, she'll do a health check on me. Like, hey, so how's it going? <laughs> how's your business? Check it in. That's real. I mean, you need those type of people in your life that are going to be that uh, proverbial wind beneath your wings and really just keep pushing you because... You know, everything is based on entropy. You know, the the law that says that things naturally decline, your energy, your your, your power, your beauty, everything is like you, you leave a room, even if you don't touch it, it's like dust will settle. Like it's yeah. just the way things are, they naturally decline. And so you gotta have people in your life that are like her, that will keep pushing you and reminding you to clean up. <laughs> don't don't get stagnant, you know, yeah. don't get in a rut, you know, keep keep moving because there is no such thing as as staying still. There's either going back or going forward. So you know, I love one day, I, real quick, she this is how serious she is with it, right? Um we had just celebrated the highest ratings that this station had ever seen, right? So we mm. were celebrating so she called me and she's like, Oh okay, so how's it going? I said, Oh we just broke these records. I said, you know, my midday show. I said, this is amazing. And she said, okay, what else you got going on? <laughs> she said, because her thing is, if you don't own it, it's not yours. Mm. Ooh. Come and, on now. And they had made a change after that. That was the crazy thing. It's like, hey, so we know everything's good and historic big. But guess what? <laughs> we want to go that way. So it was cool because she had already taught me to be the person with, you know, to own my own. And my parents were like that too, not to leave mm -hmm. them out of it. Cause you know, uh, my dad was a business owner. He had a shell gas station mm -hmm. and we all worked there. I ran the register on the weekend. He was a part owner of it and he yes. had a cluster, but he owned part of that one. So that was a big, um, you know, I always grew up knowing that, you know, hey, I, I got to be an owner. Yeah, I have to be an owner. Like, yeah. So it was reinforced uh, many ways. I love that. You, I mean, Vezzy was right when she just said that you are a phenomenal woman. Uh, you have absolutely you you have lived a dynamic life and you have proven uh, through your journey that you are someone who keeps pushing and keeps fighting no matter what. Uh, you actually found love in a very major way uh, some years yes. back, right? Um, and this this man came into your life and y'all were married on Lake Lanier. Uh, tell me about that wedding day because I'll get to the, how you met. But I'd love to talk about wedding days and things like that. Like, what was that day and what did it mean to you? Oh, okay. First of all, the, the wedding photos are absolutely beautiful. Um, but it was a very warm 43 degrees that day it was 69 the day before but it was 43 the day of our wedding so i told everybody look just smile the sun's out it's beautiful smile get through these photos and we're gonna laugh about this later and now, <laughs> every time you see the photos it looks like we were on the beach <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so that was really fun. Um, I met Wayne at the uh, Peachtree Village Film Fest. Mm. It was, um, Wayne and J uh, Lynn and JB, and I had become one of the new members. And the reason why we were at the, the Film Fest meeting is because Wayne was managing a post house. And post is basically where they put footage together and they ba basically marry the audio and video together mm -hmm. and then they spit it out. And that's what you see as a movie or a TV show or a commercial. So, um, and I had my own equipment I was shooting because somewhere along the line, after um, a couple of record deals and feeling like I was not in control of my destiny and a couple of um, interviews for the MTVs and stuff. And it was like, I went on three interviews for MTV and it was like, okay, something's got it. Like, you know, I don't want to interview for anybody. I want to do this myself. I can do this right. myself, right? Uh, so I had begun to shoot and then I started taking my bonus from my 
radio, um, you know, ratings, a little bonus, and I would just pour it back into the business. So I bought oh, that's right. lights and green screens, and and um, I did one of the first deals uh, with Turner that they ever mm. did digitally, um, and that was, let me see, around oh nine oh. Yeah, because Brooklyn's finest. My cousin's Antoine Fuqua, right? So, um, and I met him when Brooklyn's finest came out because he's older than me. So we never crossed um, paths because, but he always knew, oh, your cousin's in Atlanta. She's got a deal. And then she's on the radio. And so, and then it's like, you know, your cousin's on a video. He's Now he's got training day. He got an award. So we had already, we knew of each other, but we didn't meet. And and so um, that was around the time I had my Turner deal. So um, no one knew what digital was at the time. Nobody had, it's like webisodes. What's a webisode? So, <laughs> They're right. Right. And just a few years later, I met my husband at the film fest. They said, will the two new members of the Peachtree Village board stand up? And we stood up and and um, after uh, my mentor, Ida Harris, who is a phenomenal woman. I mean, wow. She is from Swiss Beats to Trill Build or whatever. I mean, she is a monster business lady. Like, I mean, she's monster. She does a play, right. She's amazing. So um, she said, Ramona, there's something about this guy. You got to call him. She said, he he has all these, they deal with Turner. And I, I said, I am not, I don't edit like that. I edit, but I don't edit like that. And she was like, I'm telling you something in my soul that's telling me you need to call us. And I was like, I'm not calling that guy. And I didn't call him. And so uh, months later with the, the Village Film Fest <laughs> uh, came to be, we ran into each other uh, at Charles Dutton's movie screening. And I was going to, I hate the red carpet sometimes. Oh my God, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. I don't see that. He caught me trying to bypass it. And um, I said, well, I'll just, you know, I'll go take a picture. He was like, no, we need that support. And go ahead and take your picture. I said, well, I'll take it if you take it with me. And we've been together ever since. Well, let me just say that the stars <laughs> aligned and you were supposed to take that picture. Hello? Oh. <laughs> And we found the picture. We found that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did, did you frame it? Did you put it up? You got you to gotta have that picture somewhere. Yeah, we do, huh? Yeah. We need to do that. You so should. Everybody was there. It was really fun because um, everybody has, um, has claimed responsibility for us hooking up. <laughs> Dora, um, and uh, some some other key people in the city who are our friends. So yeah. <laughs> well, you you really lucked up because there's a lot of women I know that, that talk to me who speak very passionately about the difficulty that they have finding a man in Atlanta. Uh, you were able with this beautiful story, even with some reservation and hesitation, to uh, still make it work. What was it like to date him, especially in the beginning? For a young woman who is professional and a man who is professional and you both have your lives and your vision, like, what was it like for you? Well, I'm a cre I'm creative and sometimes I'll come in here with, I'd be dreadlock, backpacker, you know, Adidas. And so sometimes, and he's so corporate <laughs> kind of, so, um, you know, I just, I was just being me and I had not dated anyone really. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I understand what the women, what women are saying, but one of the things, and you know this, because we've spoken about this, that I cannot stand, which is why um, God was like, you gotta, you gotta do it. If you don't mm. like it, change it. Don't like right. it change. Is that throughout the years of being on the air, even on, um, on TV or radio, when we get into these conversations about dating, I always find that there's always a guy around talking about, yeah, because there's a shortage. <laughs> I'm like, who got a shortage? Shortage of what? God operates. God don't. And you a man of, of please, you can't be a man of, of God talking about there's a shortage for black right. women or any woman. There, There's no shortage. That's, that's not how God operates. Mm. I start really having to reflect on what that perception was. I always thought I just haven't met him yet. You know, mm. I was single. There are some women who just swear by it. So, but then it, I had to think about it. When I went to 
a mixer or a club or even in college we went to little parties at UMass or whatever wherever we were I my my some friends were, would say there's nobody in here and I'm like there's like six guys over there there's five like, look around the room what are you talking about right yes I was I'm like what are you looking at and so I start thinking your mind limits you you I would leave the party with like four numbers like but you mad you you come in the party you mad you ain't saying you ain't even saying hi just say hi you ain't come on I had, a, I had a friend who oh this is a bad story i shouldn't tell go you. for it no you got it you already no, here this is a, okay so i had a very um i had a boy homeboy so i ran my campus radio station and um so a lot of people with records and stuff were like oh come to the city because springfield's not very far from new york city so one time we were at manhattan center for the Black Expo, and he said, look, my boy, Sean, wants to meet your girl. Now, my girl, she might be watching. <laughs> she, was the, she was that chick. She was, she's pretty. She didn't say hi to everybody like that. She was like, I'm ready to go. That's, she was ready to go, and she knows she like that. So, Sean was sitting there. She said, he's, uh -uh. he got a big nose. Not, uh, I'm not feeling him. So I was like, don't you want to just say hi? Nope. Didn't even want to talk to him. And I promise you, not even months later, I had moved to Atlanta. He blew up. Oh, Jay-Z, that guy. So next thing you know, I'm like, you could have just said hi. Like, you ain't have to marry, dude. What if he was a good dude, though? In the heart, like, you could have just, like, we not all beautiful like that. I didn't think it's that. I didn't think, I just thought he looked like an African American man. I, you know, I feel like the beauty's from the inside. So, yes. and that's a true story. Wow. True story. And she said, you know, it's something about him. It's like he's so fine to me now. <laughs> yeah, I bet he is. I was like, oh. I bet he is, right? Money <laughs> making oh. a lot of people look oh. real good. Yo, I guess I have stories, man. So, <laughs> my that's my to conclude i just feel like it's it's in it's it's what your it's your perception is you it's you if you think there's nobody then you just tricked yourself out of what god has for you yes you just told god i don't believe you that is the truth. Let me tell you, let me tell you how true that is. There are so many people right now who are saying that there is nobody out there. And like you said, there are blinders on their eyes. There, yeah. there literally there are people everywhere you go. The grocery store, <laughs> Walmart, the, the 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 J Crew. I mean, you you can find you can bump into somebody in an accident and end up with a date. Like it is too hard, especially in Atlanta, where we, as, especially as Black people who are mostly watching right now, uh, are in abundance. If you can't find a date here. Right. It is because you aren't seeing. It's not because you're not looking. Because you look, but seeing and looking are two different things. Yeah. And I and I also got tired of hearing even my fellow, uh, you know, mates, uh, workmates, whatever, perpetuate that stereotype that we're, you're just in trouble. I had one guy, he got on the air and said, what are y'all going to do? I mean, y'all, there ain't no men. I said, what? Who are you talking to? What do you mean? What are we gonna do? Like it was like some old come to Jesus, y'all in trouble type thing. Like, like we was just gonna be stuck. I'm like, yo, did you did you really you come on, man? I think I think the reason why you you were able out of a lot of people to to find someone who really connects with you or vibrates with you in that way is because Unlike a lot of people, you had this internal focus that said, this person is not lost. This person is not somewhere that I can't find them. This person is simply not in my eye view right now. But when it is time, I know that my energy will attract the energy back to me that I know I deserve. Yes. But you know, you have those false starts too. Like <laughs> like, oh, I thought it was time to go. Yeah, I thought it was time to go. What time to go? You weren't supposed to run. 
and you dang going to shore ain't supposed to be chasing after nobody either so you need to just learn how to just chill and see it and the, the prayer for me changed to um after some dud firecrackers you know you be like it didn't it didn't fire off what happened <laughs> you like god can you just tell me just give me the the vision to know that this is the person like yes and 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 that doesn't mean anyone's perfect because i'm not perfect <laughs> he ain't perfect and quarantine will show you those things even after years of marriage <laughs> my, 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 my. oh yeah yeah but we have we have people keeping us honest too like we have um you know, we have uh, Pastor Lorraine and um, Minister Michael, the Foresters, a, 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 um, and um, they married us. But so we have prayer partners and people who go, ah, you know, that wasn't right, right? You know, you ain't supposed to say that to your husband. You ain't supposed to say that to your wife. So that's the way that we've been doing this because we need people who are, will invest, who are just as vested in our success and our marriage growing into the, an awesome union as they are into theirs and you know shout out to bishop mackey and first lady Lori mackey you know people yes. like who have been around for us i love that you 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 do a well, great job <laughs> thank you work it out i work it out <laughs> you are look we we're talking about you today you are so amazing and with your relationship you have found somebody that honors you and cherishes you um, you do work with domestic violence uh, victims, and th this this thought about Black Girl Magic. How are you helping young women right now who are looking f for healthy relationships, and they may be in a very toxic one? Well, the one thing that I learned is that it it won't matter if you're pulled out of it. You know, someone said, "Okay, here's a here's an airplane." you know, grab a hold, I'm going to airlift you out of this situation. Mm. It doesn't matter if you grab on and you haven't changed your mind because something, there's something going on that you need to encourage yourself. There's a, there's, in other words, there's a reason why you are in this relationship. Mm. And so you take you everywhere you go. Some people will go back. You know, until you want to be rescued and you want to deal with what's going on with me that I actually found myself in a compromising position. Mm -hmm. you know, so the first thing is getting your mind right, knowing that you are amazing and that a child of God doesn't and should not ever be abused by anybody. Like, yes, there and God was sitting there on his throne, right? You right there. And he said, this is my daughter. And this is God. Who would harm that child? Come on. So you're, you're with someone who doesn't understand who you are. But more importantly, you don't understand who you are. You're right next to God. Like, you're his daughter. <laughs> so do you think it's cool? God's right here. And you're right here. And someone's going to come hit on you. And it's God? You're <laughs> God's child? Mm. That's good. Who's gonna do that? Who's gonna do that? Who's gonna do that? And who's <laughs> gonna do that? If you knew who you were and whose you belong to, let anybody do something like that to you. Who are you? That, that that is so good. This morning we were doing our nine a.m. call. Um, I do ten minutes of love in the morning, and and the the thought today or the affirmation this morning was, "You are enough to be loved, mm -hmm. like as you are." You are enough that you don't have to change anything. You don't have to uh, alter anything. You don't have to add anything or subtract anything the way you are because you are a creation of God. You are enough. And in that, you deserve what enough should get. You, you deserve uh, all that enough deserves. And in that, you should be thinking, I deserve more than enough. I, I am worth more than enough. Uh, the people attract, uh, associated with me should see more than just ordinary because I am extraordinary. Like yes. the way I am. And with, as you mentioned about you and your husband, with those imperfections and with those flaws, I am still enough. 
And I think there are those women because I I've, I've talked to some of those uh, domestic those those people, men and women, who have been in domestic violence situations, and and sometimes they feel like they are simply not enough, and they feel lucky just to have somebody ah. who's interested in them. And and you don't realize like you're they're not lucky like they are lucky to have someone right. that can put up with them. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's so true. So true. And you know, a lot of it in the families too. Like, we don't want to talk about what happened, you know, with uncle or aunt, you know, we don't want to talk about it. So we just keep on, just, it keeps on going around and you do it, then it happens to your child and then they attract someone, yes. you know, and that's all, that's all because like I said, sitting right next to God, he's like, you're my child. Mm. There's no way you can tell me that the most high, that God is cool with somebody beating on his child especially not in his presence because he's everywhere all the time so at this Ooh. point you, there's something got to click you know something has to click and so um there were a few organizations that you know that i was um helping out with uh, one of my good friends she um escaped a domestic violence situation mm -hmm. and her um and she tells her story all the time Jaden's ladder <clears throat> in her situation i mean wow 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 and and you know um, Jaden Zlatter was aiding women who were trying to uh, escape the situation because a lot of times when you leave, you have nothing and you're not the mm -hmm. breadwinner. So you need to start all the way over. You have really the clothes on your back and what you can fit in the car. If you have children, it's even more heartbreaking. You normally, and if you don't have a car, you know, you're just, where are you going to go? How, how are you going to do that? So, right. you know, it's almost like an underground railroad of help. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, so there are a lot of uh, different organizations that, you know, people can call and, you know, but it starts with your mind because some people, if you're not ready, then you're just going to go right back. I'm glad you brought up that point because there are a lot of people who are stuck emotionally, mentally, uh, even intellectually, like just stuck in whatever they believe to be. And... It is, it is the faith that is required to overcome that, that, that trap mm -hmm. that people get stuck in. It's like a bear trap. Really, it is. It's like you want to get free, but you know you have gotten so comfortable with the snare mm. that the removal of it will reintroduce you to a new level of pain ah. that you don't want to get to it to encounter and so you would rather deal with the pain you know than to introduce a pain even though it's freedom the the the, the releasing of the bear claw uh -huh. is so much still pain even though it's freedom from the pain it is pain in the release that people don't want to endure that you know what though that goes for anybody who's stuck in the cycle uh, kind of negative kind of i don't want to say negative but it's this whole i don't know i had a friend who and god um god bless um my boy vernon forrest <clears throat> so i had a conversation with him uh before he passed away and we were talking about one of our friends who um had who was influential but he was doing a lot in the community and so we were helping him and we just realized that someone around him was taking advantage of him. Um, I guess he was a, a sort of celebrity, but um, he was making a lot of money, but he wanted to, all he wanted to do was give back. But he had this pe these people around him that mm. wanted to steal from him that were just bad people. And so, um, not bad people. I'm not going to say, because I don't think anyone's bad. I think that you are where you are because you're choosing a certain set of circumstances and to do certain things to people. I don't think you're bad intrinsically. So anyway, um, and I couldn't understand. I said, why? And I, so I asked the guy, I said, well, why do you um, keep these people around? And he, he said to me one day, he said, Ramona, I know what this person is capable of. I can control that. Huh. It's the new people that I don't 
know how the, what the damage could be. So yeah. he had a certain, so if you ever read about why super celebrities or athletes or people go broke or whatever it is, and you're like, well, how does that happen? He had accepted the fact that certain people around him were capable of stealing 30,000, 40,000. I'm like, ah, like I don't even make that. Can you give me the money? I will invest it. I feed the home. Like, give me something. Don't let someone steal it. But in the mentality, he was in this cycle where he accepted or expected the worst and to try, everybody had such a game and a story that I know what they're capable of. I don't know what kind mm -hmm. of mess I'll jump into if I just leave all of that alone. Somebody always wants something was the mentality. So, wow. you know, that always gave me perspective on, you know, into people's lives. Like, wow, that's deep. Like, so you know who old girl's cheating or old boy's cheating well, you know? I, I expect that. The, uh, what's, the, what's that adage about the devil you know? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes. Like, yes. I know that demon. Like, that that one, I know front and back. I don't want to go into something <laughs> new and, and don't know how to handle it. And that right. fear of the unknown is, is so inhibiting. Yes. Because, I mean... Like you said, with him, he could go get a whole new entourage of people, a whole new set of people that loved and honored and cherished. Yes. But there would be that fear of, well, what if? Well, these people are already doing it. So, they do, I mean, what, what else? They do as wrong as the other ones. At least I know those ones. Right. Give yourself the freedom, the chance yeah. to, to, to have better and to experience more uh, because you deserve it, right? Like, and and that is the point of, of that is that you deserve it like you really do deserve it and when you don't feel like you do when you feel like better isn't really the the option for you for whatever reason then you will you will accept what is instead of moving into what could be and that's that takes me all the way back to you leaving school and coming down to Atlanta, like accepting that there there could be more. You believed in more. And that more was enough for you to say, I'm, I'm, I'm worth trying this. I you know? Troy, um, Troy Taylor, was it Troy Taylor characters? He produced um, a lot of people like Trey, uh, Trey songs and stuff. Troy might be even listening. Uh oh, but he told me I was in, um, I went to Electric Lady one day in Manhattan and he was in a Tony Terry, so he was in a session and so he said Ramona you're gonna have to make a decision you are either gonna have to you know be in New York more um which was I was already there two days a week I mean gosh I'm in school full time or you have to go to Atlanta and and it's funny because I reminded him of this conversation and now he's in the A um so he laughs like ah it was me that got you down here I was like <laughs> but you know we, I had some people like, look, you know, this is, you're going to have to jump all the way in, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it took a different turn, but now the movie stuff, you know, the movies, I have a movie in which goes to the point of what we were talking about, that there's no lack. Um, my movie, He Who Findeth, you know, is, is literally addressing all of those things, but it's a romantic comedy and you know, we're casting for it. We have a very exciting cast, more than I could ask or think for real. Um, so that's, you know, that's where the music and radio morphed. It, it, it married itself and then the shooting and the writing. And now I get to tell the stories through movies. That is so awesome. And, and so tell us what you have that is really dear to you that you have coming up that you are dreaming about that you are working on because we are most excited about what you have up next so tell us please <laughs> well interesting enough it's very this is very cool um one of the things that happened and it was in the paper and stuff and people were like wait is this your husband and you and y'all um <laughs> uh, we saw uh, my husband and partner, Lynn, uh, Lynn Gibson from Peachtree Village Film Fest, 
um, they signed one of the biggest and, you know, obviously I'm part of the, uh, the company, but uh, one of the biggest uh, deals in Georgia uh, ever, ever. And um, they will be one of one part of the company will be editing big major films right mm -hmm. but then you have COVID. what happened with COVID 19. Right. um it hasn't affected it too much um but just know that there are if you can think of the biggest movie producers in history you have african americans right here in atlanta who will be working directly with these people and that's amazing so with that we also have a uh, good life <clears throat> good life tv which is edifying awesome lifestyle content you know um which you can watch you'll probably be you should be on that network but um <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> um so that's that and then we have um other other content like movies so um there are people who are trying major major folks who are trying to get their films funded and we always know that that's a a kind of issue a challenge for african-american filmmakers writers producers eps whatever and um so they're funding films as well so um they're funding films um we are producing films so there's many arms but just know that we are very excited for what is happening, you know, and shout outs to the Tyler Perry's of the world, the people who had the vision to put the spotlight on the A. Um, and so all the work that my husband has done in his career, everything that I was building up and doing, you know, from buying green screens and learning how to operate cameras, it's all coming into play. And immediately we have some uh, television shows. We have um, Fab Life Open House um, that I am actually a host of. <laughs> it's one of the only times I'll be behind the camera, uh, uh, behind the camera and in front of the camera, and then um, and some other some other shows that yeah. So, um, but yeah, we have a lot of, of things happening, and those shows are are still in production even with the quarantine and breakdown and COVID which is a blessing too, because I know that not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to work right now, you know? Um, so. Uh, well, congratulations and uh, much success for all of that. That is like epic stuff that I love how humbly you said it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's so exciting. Like we wake up and jump out of bed, like, let's go. Like, <laughs> you know, and with COVID, I'm telling you, like, it separates the mice from the men and women. <laughs> and women, <Because> yes. <laughs> the most accomplished people that I know have, have, and I say this every day when I'm on the air, I come up with a way, with my real life tip, free love moment, to just share that the most accomplished people that I know are always, they're, they're like, I know one woman, she's worth a few hundred million. And I don't say that to qualify her as better than anyone. I'm just saying right. she's at a, a point in her mind where she doesn't ex expect anything else. And she said, Ramona, I am more focused than ever before. I'm getting more done from the house. I'm doing this. I'm still running my company. I'm just doing the Zooms, but I'm at my pool. I'm quicker. Like she, she can relax more because she's at home. So even the commute being gone, she has thought, Wow, with this commute, this time, that one and a half hours or that two hours that God gave me back, what am I going to do with it? So she's learned how to, through her life, turn it around and do something with it. I love it. I love it. And I you are it. too. I, yes, God, I, I am. These people so that we can tell everybody on Instagram. <laughs> Hello, that's the truth. Use this time wise. Yes. Yeah, it's a gift from God. I keep saying, I keep telling people that, like this time is truly a gift that we will never get. It. I don't, I don't ever believe we will get this kind of time again in what? history, you know, in our lifetime anyway. Yes. John Paul, the, right after you did the show, and everything was really kind of, you know, one of my very good friends uh, from Shark Tank, and he was saying, "Look, you need to go take a class." In that one hour you save and commute or whatever, take a class, 
eat right, exercise. He said, because this may be six months. Now, I didn't believe him. I said, oh, it's going to be a couple months. They're going to lock it down for two weeks. We're going to be good in a month and a half. That didn't happen. And he's right. <laughs> and he said, most of your companies won't be around. I promise you, I'm going to replay that interview. And he I said, believe it. Learn. He said, if you don't come out of this with the with your dream started, then it ain't the time. You can't blame the time. You can't. Nobody can blame time anymore. I was listening <laughs> to uh, uh, Ayanna Van Zandt. She was saying that this time is the great equalizer. Uh, that many people who are high have been brought low and many people who are low have been brought yes. high all because of how they use the equality of time. Woo! Amen. Amen, right? Hello? So you're right on it. You're on to something. And you're on something in your life, in your, in your, in your home, with your relationship, uh, in, your, in your fight. Like, you are just on it. And we're Amen. so proud of the woman that you are. Thank you so much for being who you are and continue to let your light and your voice shine on air and in everything that you touch and on screen now. Uh, keep doing it. And you know, it, it, we only like this because we have people around us praying. When I, I knew that it would, that Wayne was my husband because um, he prayed with me. Mm. He prayed over every meal. And I knew people who did, did that, but with everything, we pray together. <laughs> like, even when I want to, no, no, pray. Like, we, you know, it, it's, so people around you, they need to be at least seeking that. Because there's got to be some kind of accountability and we'll hold each other up. Yes. And learn how to, you know, pray with each other. That is beautiful. Didn't you well, pray I'm, I'm me praying. in the studio? You prayed with me. You said, I did. I, right? Before I leave this room, we need to pray. I was like, go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in it. I believe in it. And you know what? Like, it really shows the connection. I mean, I I, I love that moment because it was it was so organic. It was like it was it felt the, at the right time and the right thing to do. Um, you just never know. You know, and the consistency of that for you and your relationship, I mean, it only helps to deepen it and build the cords and the and the bind and the bind you two together even more. So I love that. You know, there are those times when you like, I don't feel like praying. And it's right. Like, pray. <laughs> I don't want to pray for him. He made me mad. You got to be honest, God. I'm being honest. I don't want to pray for him right now. He made me angry. And it's like, yeah, but you know you got to pray for him. You know you got to pray for him, right? <laughs> I'm just on it, just you know, being honest. Like, there's times when you don't want to pray for your baby. You just absolutely push him out the bed. You know, you know, you know that's the that's it. <laughs> thank you so much, Ramona. Like, thank you thank for you. being here today. You are <laughs> uh, such a light, and oh, I always you. love talking to you. So thank we, we, you. I can't wait till this is over, so we can hang out. I know, I know. The cool thing is, you got me in my favorite. This was my. This was supposed to be my nursing chair for Zozo. She. We never used it because you know she's the boss and she just didn't do it. But yeah, so um, yeah, so I'm rocking. I'm like, I know why I, I, we bought this chair. I like it, and now I'm all comfortable with you. We having a good time. We're gonna do this some more, okay? Right. Yes. Thank you so much, Ramona. Thank you. Send love to Walter, and uh, y'all stay strong, all right? All right, thank you. All right, love. Peace and Bye, blessings. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>